Hi, this is Sarah Bechtel, and welcome back to Strathmore's Colored Pencil with Mixed Media Workshop. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on enhancing colored pencil with fluid acrylics. I'll be working on Strathmore's 500 series mixed media board that was toned with fluid acrylic. I demonstrated how to tone these surfaces in lesson one, so please check out last week's video if you need a refresher on this process. Toned mixed media board is the main surface that I use for all my colored pencil and mixed media work and I tone each board with a color that relates to my subject matter. This piece was created on a mixed media board that was toned with a light blue to suggest the sky behind the ibex. The ibex was then completed with colored pencil and fluid acrylic. I toned these boards with a light yellow ochre before drawing the taxidermy heads in colored pencil. The yellow tone helps to give the feeling of a warm light source. And this piece was toned with a beige yellow color that reminded me of old parchment. Since I was depicting an extinct dodo bird, I wanted a background color that felt aged or historic. I'll be working on a drawing of a white-tailed jackrabbit today, and I chose this light violet gray color for my surface because I think it will contrast nicely with the warmer yellow and tan tones found in the jackrabbit's fur. I try to keep my surface as pristine as possible before I get started, so I normally draw out my subject on sketch paper first and then transfer it onto my mixed media board. My final artwork will only be as good as my initial drawing, so I always take my time with the drawing process. I check the proportions of my jackrabbit and do all my erasing and correcting at this stage. To transfer this, I scribble on the back with a 3B graphite pencil, making sure to completely cover the back of all my drawn lines. I use sticks of graphite lead in a lead holder rather than a classic wood encased pencil, but this is just my personal preference. I like the way these feel in my hand, and I find that these leads don't need to be sharpened as much as a regular pencil but you should use whatever feels best to you. I place my sketch on top of the board, use a small amount of tape to keep it in place, and I use a sharp HB pencil to trace over the lines of my drawing. I use a low tack tape and as little tape as possible because I don't want the tape to rip or pull the surface of my board. I'm applying light pressure to ensure that my lines transfer through, but I don't want to press too hard as this could dent the surface of my board. Before completely removing my sketch, I usually just remove some of the tape to peek under and make sure I haven't missed tracing anything. Yep, I forgot to trace over this guy's nose and mouth. So I carefully lay my sketch back in place and go over the areas I missed. When I carefully remove the tape and lift off my sketch paper, the jackrabbit has been transferred onto my mixed media board. Transferring my drawing this way doesn't mean that I can't tweak or change things once I get going, but most colored pencils are difficult to erase, so I like to have my drawing worked out before I start applying color. I've pulled out some colored pencils that I plan on using. My jackrabbit is sporting his winter coat, which is primarily white and light brown, so I'm starting with a few colors in that range as well as some shades of gray, blue, and purple. As I mentioned in lesson one, I never know exactly what colors I'll need until I'm in the shading process, so you'll see me use additional colors as I work. My jackrabbit has areas of tan fur along his back, haunches, ears, and face, so those blocks of tan are the first thing I lay in. I'm suggesting fur by using short linear strokes, and I'm applying those strokes in the direction of his fur, but at this point I'm not really concerned with getting tight detail like individual hairs. I also put in the shadows on the bottom of his haunches and under his front leg because I want to get in the basic shapes of my light and shadow areas. I go back and forth between working up my dark areas and working up my light areas, and I prefer to work on the entire drawing at once rather than finishing one small area at a time. This gives me the benefit of seeing how the full composition is progressing, and I can continually compare my values throughout the drawing. As I mentioned in lesson one, I primarily use four brands of colored pencils, Prismacolor Premier, Caran d'Ache Luminance, Derwent Drawing, and Faber-Castell Polychromos. All four of these brands, as well as many others, are available in open stock, meaning you can buy just one pencil rather than an entire set. This is important for me because I prefer to only use colored pencils with high light fast ratings. The word light fast refers to how much or little a color will fade when exposed to sunlight. So a colored pencil with an excellent or high light fast rating means that a color should not significantly fade over time. Most artist grade colored pencils will have some method of rating their pencils for light fastness, and companies usually put that information on the pencil, in the packaging, or on their website. 
So by purchasing colored pencils open stack, I can pick and choose only the colors with high ratings. All four of the brands I use have a significant number of Lightfast colors in their line, and if this is something that's important to you, I would suggest looking for Lightfast ratings on your own colored pencils. I'm using a photo reference of a jackrabbit that I photographed at a natural history museum, and I also looked at a few images I found online to make sure I had a good understanding of jackrabbit anatomy, proportions, and fur color. I'm looking at my photo while I work to make sure I'm blocking in the light and dark areas correctly to make my jackrabbit look realistic, but I'm not copying the photograph hair by hair. I prefer to use photo references as a guide. They're incredibly useful, but I also like to have the freedom to change or manipulate things as I see fit. While I'm working, I compare the shape of the light areas versus the shape of the shadow areas to make sure my jackrabbit feels like he's solid and correct. I looked at my reference photo to check details like the length of his ears, the size of his feet, and the width of his front legs. Even though I checked and rechecked my sketch, once I start adding color and developing the drawing, there are always little adjustments that need to be made. Because a lot of my subjects are animals, white, brown, and gray are a big part of my color palette, but I always try to search for a wider range of color. Pushing the color helps breathe some life into my subjects. So rather than just sticking to neutral colors, I'm using cooler blue and purple tones in my shadows and warmer yellow and peach tones in my light areas. Because my surface is purple, I can also use that to my advantage. In areas where I want the fur to have some purple undertones, I can apply my colored pencil lighter so the color of the board shows through. I always like to remind people that colored pencil is not a particularly fast medium. It takes time and patience to build up layers and achieve rich color and value. This video has been drastically sped up, but it takes hours, not minutes, to complete a colored pencil drawing. Also, you'll notice that I don't put just one layer of each color down. I probably pick up each color dozens of times as I'm moving around the drawing and shading different areas. I mentioned that I usually grab additional colors as I'm shading, and you can see here that I've already added four or five colors to my pile. So don't worry or get frustrated if your drawing isn't fully developed after 20 minutes, or if it takes you a bit of time to get your colors correct. Stick with it and you'll see that the real beauty of colored pencil comes with time and layers. The benefit of this medium is that it's capable of such subtlety and fine detail. The qualities that make it a bit slower to work with are the same qualities that make it capable of creating really amazing and refined art. Also, the fluid acrylic that I'll be adding soon does help speed up the process without losing the detail of the colored pencil. At this point, I have the basic areas of light and dark mapped out, but my colored pencil is applied relatively lightly and my colors aren't really saturated yet. This is a good time to add the first layer of acrylic. My colored pencil isn't applied too heavily or thick, so the acrylic will easily absorb into the paper. The acrylic will also help my colors appear more saturated and it will push my values darker. Here I have my painting set up. I have ultramarine blue, transparent yellow iron oxide, Van Dyke brown hue, and shading gray squeezed out on my paper plate palette. These colors are relatively transparent and I'm further pushing that transparency by adding water. I'm not adding any white acrylic yet because the titanium white acrylic is more opaque than the other colors. If I were to add white into these transparent washes, the color would look chalky and washed out, so I only use white paint in the brightest areas of my drawing. I'm using a number 4 round brush, and as I'm mixing the paint, I blot excess off my brush with the paper towels I have handy. I'm mainly using two mixtures for the darker areas of my jackrabbit. I'm using a cooler gray to enhance the black tips of his ears and to darken the shadows under his haunches, chin, front legs, and hind feet. And I'm using a warmer brown gray to add more saturation to the tan areas of his fur. I'm keeping the acrylic thin and I don't push my shadows too dark in the first layer. I can always add more acrylic. But once the acrylic has dried, it's permanent and cannot be removed from the paper. So I start conservatively and then I add more as needed. I'm generally applying the acrylic in small linear strokes to suggest fur similar to how I apply my colored pencil. But in areas that are completely in shadow, I'm applying the acrylic as more of just a flat shape of color, rather than small strokes. This is because I'll go back with colored pencil to get the detail of the fur, so I don't really need to worry about doing that with the acrylic. As I mentioned in lesson one, this technique is fairly forgiving because the acrylic is so thin and transparent. 
I don't have to be too careful about my application technique, because if I get a little wild and apply the acrylic somewhere I didn't mean to, I can always apply colored pencil on top to cover up or correct it. I let the acrylic dry for about 10 minutes before going back in with my colored pencil to add more detail. Colored pencil will not stick to wet paper or paint, so it's important to let my paper dry. The acrylic is very thin when I apply it, so it doesn't create a true paint film on the surface of my drawing. It mainly absorbs into the paper. So when I apply colored pencil on top of the acrylic, the surface doesn't feel different or smoother. The acrylic pushed my dark values darker. So now I'm working on heightening my light values with a white colored pencil. I'm also using my white pencil in the tan areas of fur to add some lighter hairs and give his coat a mottled effect. I'm putting more texture into both the light and dark areas of his fur with short linear strokes to make him look fuzzy. And I'm also refining and detailing his facial features and ears. At this point my lights are fairly well developed, but when working on toned paper it's difficult to achieve really bright, intense whites with only colored pencil. So this is when I introduce my white acrylic. I usually begin with applying the white in the same consistency as my other colors. I add water to make it thinner and more transparent, and I'm applying it in small linear strokes. But in areas where I want a more intense white, I'll apply my white acrylic slightly thicker. I'm adding less water to the paint so it stays more opaque and bright. I'm using this for areas of my jackrabbit that are lightest in color, his tail, chest, knee, feet, and around his mouth. However, once I start applying thicker paint, colored pencil will no longer lay nicely on top. The thicker acrylic fills the tooth of the paper and creates a slick surface that colored pencil can't stick to. So I only add thicker white paint to my highlight areas where I want the brightest whites. I do this towards the end of my drawing when it's almost finished, so I already know that I won't need to go back into those areas with colored pencil. I don't have a set method of how many times I go back and forth between the colored pencil and acrylic. I really let the drawing dictate my process and I just add more of each as needed. As long as I keep the colored pencil and acrylic relatively thin, I can continually go back and forth between the mediums for many layers. And if I want to get thicker with either the colored pencil or acrylic, that's fine too. I just need to be aware that once my mediums get thicker and fill the tooth of the paper, then the surface of my drawing will be slick and I won't be able to add any more layers on top. I'm not adding anything else to my bright highlights, but in areas where I haven't applied thicker acrylic, I can continue to go back and forth between acrylic and colored pencil. I'm adding a few detail touches in the fur and a shadow underneath, and I think I'm calling this guy finished. In next week's video, I'll be discussing how to enhance colored pencil with watercolor, and I'll be showing the process of completing a drawing from start to finish. Thanks for tuning in, and see you next week.